Hello, Adam, Midpoint Library Systems Digital and Special Collections Archivist here today to talk to you about the history of baseball in Middletown, focusing on the years from roughly 1890 to 1950. So to begin, I'll just talk a little bit about the origins of baseball in general before diving into the history of baseball in Middletown. Baseball as we know it today wasn't so much created as it evolved over time, starting most likely with a slow transformation from the English games of rounders and cricket. Early references to baseball, like to a baseball-like game, date back to the 18th century. By the outbreak of the by the outbreak of the Civil War in 1861, most people were playing a similar game, which included a diamond-shaped field infield, foul lines, and a three-strike rule, but no gloves. In 1868, the first professional category of baseball was established. Previously, all leagues were either local or amateur, though some players had been getting paid. The Cincinnati Red Stockings were the first club to declare themselves openly professional for the 1869 season. This team would dissolve by the end of 1870 and be replaced by the modern day Cincinnati Reds in 1882. With professional teams uh, and leagues gaining a foothold, local, amateur, and semi-professional leagues continued to abound. In 1876, the National League was founded. 25 years later, the American League was formed. And in 1902, an agreement was made between the two leagues, leading to the first World Series in 1903. Middletown in the 1800s, primarily the 1880s and 1890s, was home to several local amateur teams. Among the local clubs uh, applying their wear at the time were the Middletown Baseball Club, the Woolies Baseball Club, Haymakers Baseball Club, and the Middletown Laurels. Uh, these teams would have played each played other local teams, such as from Hamilton. The news article on the left reads, The Woolley Baseball Club of this city went to Hamilton last Monday for the purpose of playing a game of baseball with the Hamilton boys. It was play without ball for our boys as they hammered their opponents clear off the field. They started into in to beat the Hamiltons 100 to 1, but when they got to 25 to 0, they got ashamed of themselves and let up. To show the Hamiltonians what they would, what they could do, our boys made 14 in one inning. Some time ago, our club let the Hamilton boys beat them pretty badly for the purpose of getting a little sugar. Our boys treated their visitors as well as they knew how, and the Hamiltonian, not the ball players, played the hoodlum throughout. They were anxious to get bets and succeeded. But when they saw that what our boys could do, they began to squeal to the stakeholders for their money. They played the baby act to perfection. One big red-faced loafer actually cried for the 50 cents which he had put up. Our boys will play the return game here soon when it hoped they will leave their babies, squealers, and loafers at home. We can and will treat the players as gentlemen should be treated. The 19 aughts saw Middletown's first semi-pro teams, as well as actual investment in the sport of baseball. In 1901, the first baseball team with ties to Armco, the American Rolling Mill Baseball Club, makes an appearance, but is short-lived. In 1902, the Middletown Club joins the Southern Ohio League, playing with other clubs from Miamisburg, Sims Corner, Amanda, Dayton, and Springfield. Though disagreements over how to divide gate receipts cancel at least one game between the Middletown and Springfield clubs. Then, in 1904, local saloon and theater owner John G. Miller takes over the Middletown Club, controlling it until 1906. The Millerites, as the club was known, lose to the Hamilton Krebs in the Butler County Championship 13-3 in 1906. Uh, in August of 1906, the Middletown Baseball and Athletic Association is formed by various local stakeholders who own, the sh who own shares of the team. John G. Miller is elected president of the association. Then, in 1907, the Middletown team joins the Kentucky-Indiana-Ohio League, a semi-pro league representing various teams from Kentucky, Indiana, and Ohio. In 1907, the league was made up of the teams from Connersville, Miamisburg, Middletown, as well as, team, as, well as the Hamilton Krebs, the Cincinnati Shamrocks, and the Cincinnati uh, Vitamins. As mentioned, 1906 brought about the formation of the Middletown uh, Baseball and Athletic Association, 
It also brought about the MBBAC's shining achievement, the People's Ballpark. People's Ballpark was located along the hydraulic canal. On the high, hot, uh, which is present um, on the hydraulic canal, what is presently Rothman Park near the corner of Reinhardt's Boulevard and North Main Street, and officially opened on September 16, 1906. When the park opened, it was over 4.5 acres and was enclosed with a 7-foot high, tight board fence. The grandstand measured nearly 200 feet in length and was allegedly comparable to some professional stadiums. The, stadiums could seat, the stadium could seat 2,000 and had a separate ticket office and bridge over the canal. The first game at the park was between the Middletown team and the Cincinnati uh, Vitamins team. The park hosted uh, 1,500 people that night. Uh, Middletown's population, according to 1910 census, was 13,152. In 1921, the Middletown Baseball and Athletic Association sold the park to the city of Middletown for $1,600, the remaining debt on the mortgage. In December 1940, the city obtained 158 acres of land from William and A.D. Smith, adjacent to where the ballpark plot was, and the area was incorporated into Smith Park. Between 1910 and 1920, the number of teams playing amateur and semi-professional baseball expanded immensely, while there were many teams in local leagues, most failed to stay together for very long. And here's just a list of some of those teams. The expectations to this rule uh, were the Armco League, the Armco Sunday team, and the Gardner Harvey teams. The Armco League started in 1913. As an, amateur base, uh, as an amateur baseball league for selected Armco employees. Teams were built by captains who, would, who could draw from a specified segment of the Armco workforce. It was sponsored by Armco and the Armco Association. The league ran until 1922, when it was replaced by the Armco Twilight League, which was truly an amateur league open to all Armco employees. In 1919, the Armco Sunday team was formed, which was to serve as an sort of all-star team of Armco employees who would play other local semi-professional local and industrial teams. The Armco Sunday team would eventually become the Armco representative team. With the rise in popularity of the Armco League, about, um, both amongst players and spectators, the Armco Association and Armco decided to invest in the game more fully, and to do so, they built Armco Field. While the f place where Armco Field had been had previously been couple of baseball diamonds, in 1913 and 1914, a grandstand was added, and the field was officially dubbed Armco Field. The first game took place May 9, 1914. Armco would go, go on to serve as the, Armco Field would go on to serve as a home for most of Armco's baseball-related activities, as well as several, several other local teams. The field was maintained by the Armco Association and Armco, and several improvements were added over the years. Uh, specifically, in 1935, floodlights were added. The same year, lights were, at, were installed at Crosley Field. The first night game was between Armco Steelmakers of Middletown and the Armco Zanesville team. An attendance of 5,000 people was recorded. In 1953, the bandstand was removed, and in 1955, the grandstand was removed, effectively bringing about the end of Armco Field. The 1920s were dominated by semi-professional industrial representative teams, i.e. teams sponsored by and partially made up of employees from local businesses and industries. The decade was led by the Gardner Harvey's baseball team. Local amateur teams were still around. 1920s saw the arrival of the first church teams and leagues, such as the Holy Trinity baseball team. However, the first half of the decade truly belonged to the Gardner Harvey baseball team. In 1924, the team won the KIO League Championship as well as the Ohio Championship and were KIO League runners-up in 1925. 1926 saw the Gardner-Harvey and Armco teams merge, forming the joint Gardner-Harvey-Armco team, actual name. <laughs> the, te the merged team operated for two years, playing in the Central League. The team was una unable to carry on the success of its predecessor, but did employ Larry Koff, former Red second baseman from 1960-1917 and from 1919-1921. 1928 saw the Gardner Harvey Armco team disband and be replaced by a locally supported Middletown team backed by 22 different business interests, the Armco Association and Gardner Harvey amongst them. In 
The te this team, managed by former athletic director of the University of Cincinnati, Boyd Chambers, Boyd Chambers captured the Cent Central League Championship in 1928. The 1920s also saw the Cincinnati Reds come to town for three separate exhibition games. The first exhibition game took place on July 17, 1926, between the Reds and the Gardner Harvey Armco team, and resulted in a victory for the home team, shocking the world, or at least, well, Middletown. The 1920s, or 19, sorry, the 1930s saw a continuation of the dominance of representative baseball, but now it was the Armco representative team making noise. The Armco representative team reformed in 1929 when the Armco, when the Middletown multi-stock team was not renewed. The Armco representative uh, team would go on to be KIO League champions in 1929, um, and then Indiana Ohio League runner-ups, runner, runners up in 1930, and then IO League champions in 1933 and 1935. For the rest of Middletown, baseball went on the decline and was mostly replaced with softball. Some local teams and leagues still played ball, such as the Milltown Merchants and various other church leagues, but most um, men had converted to playing softball. On April 15, 1947, Jackie Robinson broke the major league color barrier. While never formally a written rule, this color barrier was created when the National League was founded and a gentleman's agreement was made to not employ black players. The exclusion and segregation of black and African-American players would be common practice at all levels of the game. To play baseball, black men had to form their own leagues and teams. Milltown was no exception to this, and sadly, most of these teams and men are lost to history. Uh, potentially the first of Milltown's black teams was the Milltown Colored Athletics team, which began playing during 1915. Along with supporting... Um, Along with supporting the Armco League and the Armco representative teams, the Armco Association and Armco also sponsored several colored teams throughout the years as well. Pictured here is the Armco baseball team from 1920 on the left, and a news article about the Armco Grays from 1941. Additionally, on June 2nd, 1936, the Armco representative team welcomed the famed Pittsburgh uh, Negro League team, the Homestead Grace, um, losing the contest 7-4. to four. The 1940s were an exciting but ultimately sad time for baseball in Middletown. In 1940, 1942 would be the last year of the Armco representative team, which had been playing in some um, capacity since roughly 1919. With the U.S. entrance into World War II in 1943, amateur and semi-professional baseball disappeared in Middletown. However, in 1944, fully professional baseball arrived with the Middletown Red Sox, a Class D development team or farm team of the Boston Red Sox. The team played at Armco Field and was a part of, a, of the Ohio State League, along with teams from Marion, Springfield, Lima, Zanesville, and Newark. In 1945, the Middletown Red Sox were replaced with the Middletown Rockets, a farm team for the Milwaukee Brewers. The Rockets would play the Zanesville Dodgers in the championship and appear to lose. In 1946, saw yet another change with the Rockets being replaced by the Middletown Reds, also referred to as the Middletown Little Reds, a farm team for the Cincinnati Reds. The Little Reds would finish at the bottom of the league and no minor league team would come to Milton in 1947. 1947 would see the return of Armco baseball team and the semi-professional Armco Vets. Um, the Armco Vets would play into the 1950s before disbanding. Finally, the 1940s would also give rise to organized women's softball leagues, such as the Milltown Girls Softball League of 1947, in which the Armco Steelettes were champions. And that concludes our journey through Middletown's baseball history from 1890 to 1950. Um, I'd like to thank you. Uh, please join me again next time for more videos on local history.